All right, find that comfortable seated position. Let your spine get nice and long. Close the eyes. Start to check in with your breath. Start to elongate the inhales and exhales. Start to notice what thoughts are coming in, what distractions, you know, those responsibilities and those epiphanies we're all so excited about. The last few days I've been thinking a lot about fear and how fear just kills everything. And so as you sit and breathe and check in with your thoughts, notice which thoughts you're holding on to that you're afraid you're not going to happen late, later. Because I know I do that a lot of times in my meditation. I'm, I'm thinking, well, I, I really have to think about this thought because if it's not here at the end of my meditation, then it'll never come again and I'll miss that opportunity and then my life will be over. And so I would really encourage you today to start to notice what things we're making our decisions on in a reaction to fear. As a teacher, I know a lot of times I end up taking it easy on my students because I'm afraid that if I push too hard, then they're not going to come back or they're not going to like me. And that really doesn't do a service to anybody. I've been watching some other teachers online and, and curious as to, you know, well, why does that person have 150,000 subscribers? And then I watched their video about weight loss and they just lay on their mat for 30 minutes and stretch. And I'm like, well, that's a lovely restorative class, but that has absolutely nothing to do with weight loss. And doing that will not help weight loss. But I understand where it's coming from. It's coming from that fear of that if I'm sitting here and just talking to you for, we're hitting about two minutes right now, maybe you're going to get bored and you're going to think, well, this stupid teacher, he's just sitting here talking for two minutes while I'm sitting here and breathing. Isn't he supposed to be teaching me a yoga class? So if I was to make my choice from fear, I would be running away from the conversation that I'm having with you right now and I would just start us moving. And I notice that I do that a lot of times in my teaching. I, instead of offering a space for you to confront these fears, I will tend to try to run away from them, to run away from, oh, well, what if, what if the student doesn't come back? Or what if I push them too hard and then they hurt themselves? And that is another balance. We, I know that I will have a tendency a lot of times in my own practice to stop pushing myself once I am afraid I am going to injure myself. Now there's a difference between being afraid I'm going to injure myself and when I'm actually going to injure myself. It's a delicate balance. I was in my own very nice deep practice and I injured my left ankle really badly a few years ago and so I have always been very, very careful to not injure it again, and I've been spending a lot of time in fear from that ankle and not letting it open up at all because I've been so afraid that I'm going to injure it again. And so I finally just sat with the pain and the breath of letting it open, and I started to realize that I was holding myself back by being so afraid that I was going to hurt that ankle again. And we do that often. We come into these different poses and we start to think, there's no way I can breathe through this. There's no way that I can do this. And when I started finding that space where I could breathe through cramps and I could breathe through all of these crazy sensations in my body is when I finally started finding all of that healing. I mean, it's taken me 10 years of work, but I have healed through so much. You know, pinched nerves, torn hamstrings, tendonitis, all of these things in my body. But I've made mistakes along the way. I have injured myself, but the injury hasn't made me stop. And that's the only time that fear really wins, is when it makes us stop. So I would encourage you today to breathe through these sensations. I could sit here and I could say, yeah, folding myself in half backward feels awesome. It doesn't. It feels like I'm folding myself in half backward. 
whatever you might think in your mind what that sensation feels like, that's what it feels like. It's, it's, it's an incredible, mind-blowing, crazy experience but it's not all good. There's a lot of very strange sensations that happen when I'm doing these strange things to my body. And as a teacher, I might be sitting here going, oh my gosh, I shouldn't tell them this. I shouldn't tell them it's going to take 10 years to work through this healing. I shouldn't tell them that it's going to be these crazy sensations that happen when I'm folding my body in half. And I definitely still should not be talking five minutes into this yoga class. But I want to be truthful. Because I think that that really is what it comes down to, is we have that fear of truth, that fear of being that vulnerable, and the fear of failing, the fear of making the mistake. And yes, you can injure yourself in yoga, but it's a pretty safe space. And you know your body pretty well. And your breath knows your body really well. So I'm going to teach a pretty challenging class today. But I will encourage you along the way to let go of that fear and just see what happens. Now, at the same time, I'll probably encourage you to have exit strategies. So if you do fall, you won't hurt yourself. But why don't we hold on to our breath, those long inhales and those long exhales. Breathe through any of that fear any of that worry. And when you start to fear, when your body starts to tell you, I cannot do this, I cannot continue holding this pose, instead of giving in, see what happens if you can come back to an even deeper breath. And right now, I'll start doing it with you. Because there's a part of me that's really starting to fear that we've been sitting here too long. So instead, we're going to come into a nice deep breath. Take a deep inhale in. Long exhale out. Deep inhale in through the nose. Long exhale out the nose. Deep inhale in, reach the crown of the head a little higher. Exhale, keep that length, but relax the shoulders, knees, and hips. Take a deep inhale in, let the belly fill up, let the diaphragm fill up. Slow exhale out, push the belly back toward the spine. Take a deep inhale in for three, two, one. Slow exhale out, three, two, one. Deep inhale in, three, two, one. Hold the breath, three. Two, one, slow exhale out. Three, two, one, hold empty. Three, two, one, huge inhale in. Three, two, one, hold at the top. Three, two, one, exhale slowly. Three, two, one, hold empty. Three, two, one, one more time on your own. Notice any thoughts that are still holding on, any worries. I promise they will all be waiting for you an hour from now. Start to take a little time to come deeply into your breath, deeply into this space. Deeply into here and now. On your next inhale, inhale the arms out and up. Bring the palms together, exhale them down in between the eyes. May your practice cultivate enlightened thoughts. Inhale, exhale the hands in front of the mouth. May your practice cultivate enlightened speech. Inhale, exhale the hands in front of the heart. May all of your practices cultivate an enlightened heart. Take one more inhale in. Exhale, place your hands out in front of you. Roll up over your knees and toes and come into downward facing dog. Feet hip distance apart, really spreading those fingers, grounding down. Bend one knee and then the other. We just spent a lot of time sitting. Wake up the legs, wake up the calves, wake up the hamstrings. Release the heels down. And then inhale, coming forward to plank. Engage the core. Exhale, floating down. Chaturanga, shoulders out, elbows in. Inhale, right back up to plank. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Two more times. Inhale, rolling forward to plank. 
Press down to the tips of the fingers. Exhale, floating down. Chaturanga, elbows in. Press down to the tips of the fingers. Inhale, right back up to the plank. Exhale, back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, coming forward. Keep the core engaged the whole time. Exhale, floating down. Chaturanga. Center of the back, high. Inhale, back up to plank. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, coming up to the balls of the feet. Turn the gaze forward. Walk to the front of the mat. Exhale, down, forward fold. Inhale, coming halfway up. Tuck the chin, feeling long. Exhale, releasing down, really nice and deep. Inhale, coming halfway up, transfer the weight toward the heels. Exhale, releasing down a little deeper. Inhale, coming halfway up. And exhale, release a little deeper. Put a little bend in the knees. Inhale, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale and reach. And exhale, lead with the heart down to the toes. Inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, release down. Plant the hands, stepping back to plank. Take an inhale in. Exhale down, chaturanga. Inhale through and up, your back bend of choice. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale, coming up to the balls of the feet. Turn the gaze forward, step or float to the front of the mat. Exhale down, forward fold. Inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, releasing down a little deeper. Put a little bend in the knees. Inhale, rolling up. Reach the arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. This time, as you inhale, bend into the knees, reach the fingers up, Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take the right elbow on the outside of the left thigh. Push down with that left hand. Notice if the knees are collapsing in. Notice if they're still in line. Notice if the crown of the head is still reaching, still finding those same deep breaths. Bend a little deeper into the knees. Notice if one knee is coming out in front of the other. And then inhale, coming back, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take the left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. Push down with that right hand. Waking up the spine, waking up the breath. Starting to find that nice deep twist. Bend a little deeper into the knees. Open the heart a little bit more. Notice if all of your weight is into just one foot. Try and transfer it back to both. And then inhale, coming up, chair pose. Exhale, lead with the heart, head down to the toes. Inhale, coming halfway up, tuck the chin, feeling long. Exhale, plant the hands, step or float back, down through your vinyasa. Inhale, through and up, keep the core engaged. Exhale, down to the earth. Inhale, right back up to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, coming up to the balls of the feet, turn the gaze forward, step or float to the front of the mat. Exhale, down, forward fold. Put a little bend in the knees. Inhale, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms out and up. Exhale, bring your feet together, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach the fingers up, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take the right elbow on the outside of the left thigh. Push down with that left hand. I'm going to be here for a few breaths. You can open the arms if you would like, trying to reach the right finger to the outside of your left toes. You can even reach that left hand behind your back. Maybe even reaching for that bind with those right fingers. Reaching for the left by bending a little deeper into the knees. A few deep breaths. And then slowly place the left fingertips down on the like outside of your mat, lined up with the left pinky toes. Take your left fingers, reach them all the way out. Start to place the knee on top of that right elbow. Trying to reach the left elbow toward that left hip, and then see if you can start to lift your toes. So we're still finding that nice deep twist, same deep breaths. Very nice. And then slowly coming back to center. And inhale, reach the arms up, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Left elbow, right thigh, push down with that right hand. Same deep breaths, maybe reaching those left fingers down to the outside of the right toes. Right fingers up, maybe reaching those right fingers around the back. Bending a little deeper, trying to reach those left fingers for the right, stopping anywhere along the way, listening to your breath. See if you can still find those long inhales and long exhales. And then trying to place those right finger, left fingers down. Right finger shoulder distance out to the side. See if you can place that little bend in the elbows, trying to place your knee up on top of that tricep. Right hip heads toward the right elbow. Same deep breaths. 
giving it a try. Notice where the thoughts are. And then find your way back through center. Inhale, reach the fingers up, chair pose. Exhale, lead with the heart, head down to the toes. Inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, releasing down, step or float back to, down through your vinyasa. Inhale, through and up. Exhale, down to the earth. Inhale, center of the back high. Exhale, back downward dog. Inhale, coming up to the balls of the feet, turn the gaze forward, step or float, front of the mat. Exhale, down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, release a little deeper. Inhale, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms out now. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a few deep breaths. Find that focal point right in front of you. Notice where the thoughts are. Notice where the breath is. Start to transfer the weight over toward the right foot. Let those left toes come up. Maybe the inside of the ankle, calf, inside of that thigh. Reaching the crown of the head long. And don't worry about falling out of it. We fall out of balance all the time. Don't let the fear of falling out of balance allow you to stop trying. Bring that left foot in for half lotus, pulling it in toward that hip flexor on the right side. Flex the left toe. And the more that you send that right hip forward, left knee back, the more you'll feel that stability there opening in the hip. And then start to bend into the right knee. Keep those left toes nice and flexed. It's going to really start to open up that hip. Be sure the opening's happening in the hip and not in the knee. See if you can keep the chest high. Now maybe just taking a few breaths here. Or you can make a diamond with your fingertips. Breathe out. Reach those fingertips out, get a little deeper. Keep your eye on that focal point, same deep breaths. On an inhale, bring that diamond back into your chest, palms first. Straighten that leg, exhale, hands to heart center. Start to bring that left knee up into your chest. Hold on to that knee, pull it in, find that nice length, and then reach to the inside of the left foot with the left hand. Now you can either grab that foot or reach all the way for your shin. Start to reach the right arm forward, kick back into that left hand, try and keep the chest high. Turn that palm up, keep that focal point, same deep breath. Slowly with control, start to bring that knee back up into your chest. Very nice. Now you can either hold on to that left knee with the right hand, reach the left hand back, or start to reach down for those peace grip on those toes. Crown of the head a little longer. I know that right leg is starting to feel it. See if you can just breathe a little deeper. Find the strength in your breath. One more. Inhale in. Exhale. Slowly place that foot all the way down. Inhale. Reach the arms up. Exhale. Lead with the heart. Inhale. Halfway up. Exhale, releasing down. Inhale, bend into the knees, reach the fingers up, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take that left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. And then start to reach the left toes back behind you. Transfer the weight toward the right foot. Keep that nice little twist moving into a twisted lunge. Same deep breaths. Keeping the hands toward heart center, start to transfer the weight back toward the right foot. Bring that left foot up to meet the right. And then inhale up, chair pose. Exhale, lead with the heart. 
Heel toe the feet out to the edges of your mat. Bend into the left knee. Keep the left fingers down. Reach the right fingers up. Take a few breaths. Move around with that right hip, letting all those muscles go after all that balance. And then reach both fingers down. Put a nice deep bend in your knees. Chest sinking down in between your thighs. Interlace the hands behind your back. Start to send your pinkies down toward the earth. Really let the head, neck, and shoulders release. And then start to straighten the legs as much as you can, getting those pinkers, pinkies closer and closer to the earth. And then release the hands down. Heel toe your feet back to hip distance apart. Put a little bend in the knees. Inhale, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Find that focal point one more time, but still allow yourself to see your periphery so you have the focal point, but you're still softening the gaze. Transfer the weight toward that left foot. Lift the right toes. Try to not grip with those left toes. Bring the right foot up. Find that foundation. Find that deep breath. Bring that half lotus in. Right toes nice and flexed. Still sending that left hip forward. Notice if it's sticking out to the side. Pull it back in alignment. Maybe staying here. Starting to bend into that left knee. Trying to keep the chest high. And again, staying here, or start to make that diamond out from your chest, feeling the energy reaching forward as you bend deeper and deeper. Keep those toes flexed to the openings happening in the hip. If there's any pinching in the back of the neck, you can try to turn the gaze down. Otherwise, keep it on your drishti, your focal point. Same deep breaths. On an inhale, pull that diamond back in. Exhale, hands to heart center. Slowly pull that knee up into your chest. Crown of the head high. I know that those balancing muscles are starting to get tired. All of our balancing muscles work on oxygen and not glucose. So theoretically, the deeper you breathe, the more energy those balancing muscles have. Grab the inside of that right foot with the right hand or reach down for the shin if you want to get that back leg a little higher. Start to reach those left fingertips forward. Same deep breaths. Turn that front palm up. Long inhales. Long exhales. Slowly bring that knee through. Ooh, a little fear of falling came over me right there. Get the crown of the head a little higher. Breathe a little deeper. Maybe reaching down for a peace grip with those left fingertips. Reaching that back arm back. Same deep breaths. Try and get the chest high. Crown of the head high. Long inhales and long exhales. And slowly pull that foot in. Place it down. Reach the fingers out now. Exhale, lead with the heart. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, releasing down, forward fold. Put a nice deep bend in the knees. Inhale, reach the fingers up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Right elbow, left thigh. Push it down with that left hand. Open the heart. Start to transfer the weight toward the left foot. Slowly send those right toes all the way back. Nice deep twisted lunge. Same deep breaths. Transfer the weight back toward that left foot. Start to bring the weight all the way forward. And then inhale up, chair pose. And exhale, lead with the heart. Heel toe the feet out to the edges of your mat. Bend into that right knee. 
And reach the left fingers up. And move through that left hip, let it release. And then place both of the hands down. Turn the toes out. Send the hips down. Come into a nice squat. Elbows right in at your knees, chest high. A few deep breaths. Place your palms down, shoulder distance apart. Really spread the fingers. Press down with your thumb and index finger through the tips of your fingers. Put a nice deep bend in your elbows so that you can place your knees on top of your triceps. And then maybe coming up to the balls of the feet. Maybe starting to lift one toe at a time. Find your way up to a nice crow. Maybe straightening the arms as much as you can. Have an exit strategy. Breathing deep. Long inhales. Long exhales. And then slowly find your way all the way back down through a vinyasa. Scoot the feet back. Exhale down. Inhale through and up. Exhale back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, coming forward to plank. Exhale, left forearm first, down to forearm plank. Interlace the fingers, except for the pinky and ring. Pull the elbows toward each other, back towards your big toes. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Find that nice deep breath. Center of the back high, engage the core. On an inhale, left hand first, coming up to plank. Exhale, right forearm down. A few deep breaths. Pull the elbows towards your toes. Inhale, right hand first, coming up. Exhale, left forearm down. Same deep breaths. Bring the right fingertips to your left elbow. Bring your feet together back behind you. On an inhale, roll onto the outside of the right toes, left fingers up. Pressing down with that whole right palm, relaxing that right shoulder down, maybe bringing that left foot up for tree. Deep breath. Maybe grabbing onto those left toes, extending that left heel out. Try and get those hips a little higher. And then coming back through center, forearm plank, left fingers to that right elbow, roll onto the outside of that left foot. Right fingers up, tree if you would like, same deep breaths. I know that there's a little fear building inside of me right now, wondering how sore I'm going to be after this. But I'm just going to keep breathing deep. Don't let the fear stop you. Find a deeper breath and you'll be fine. Slowly come back through center. Forearm plank. Pull those elbows back towards your big toes. And then place the hips down. Place the palms down. Roll the shoulders back. Deep, deep breaths. Keeping that chest floating as much as you can. Start to interlace the hands behind the back. Lift the wrists above your sit bones. Bring your big toes together. See if you can start to lift your toes without engaging your glutes. So you can use your wrists as a gauge. See if you can just use your hamstrings. Same deep breaths. Any pinching in the back of the neck, turn the gaze down. Bend the knees, reach back, grab the ankles or tops of your feet, kick into your hands, use those quads. Keep the core engaged so you're not just dumping into that low back. Same deep breaths. And gently release all the way back to child's pose, knees nice and wide, big toes together. Release that low back, take a few deep breaths, recenter. Let it go. Notice the thoughts, notice the breath, notice the focus. Notice if there have been any worries, fear of falling over, fear of going too far. And notice if it was a little easier when you found a deeper breath. 
and then find your way up, downward facing dog. Inhale that right heel up. I'm going to be here for a few breaths. Notice if that right hip is stacking at all on top of the left. Notice if you're still pressing down with your whole palm. See if you can sink your heart closer to your left toes to get that right heel higher. And then bring it forward and through. Place it down near that right hand. Pull back on the right heel, forward with that left hip, coming up to the fingertips. Take a little weight out of the hands. Take deep breaths. And start to reach the fingers out in front of you. If you can, start to take the weight forward. Keep those fingertips lifted. Find your way up. If you need to, you can place your fingertips down. Otherwise, keep that reach. Take an inhale in. Exhale, bend deeply into that knee. Send those left toes all the way back. And come up, crescent pose. Chest to your thigh. Slowly take the weight forward and up. Warrior three. Inhale in. Exhale, bend into that knee. Send those left toes all the way back. Inhale up, crescent pose. Exhale, chest to thigh. One more time. Inhale, through and up. Exhale, bend. Reach all the way back. Inhale in. Exhale, hands to your hips. Take an inhale in. Reach that left hip forward, right hip back. Exhale, float the left knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, float, core engage. Inhale, reach. Exhale, float. Inhale, reach all the way up, crescent. Exhale, hands to heart center. Left elbow, right thigh, push down with that right hand. Should feel really nice after that work. Maybe starting to open the hands, left fingers to the outside of those right toes. Maybe reaching the right hand behind your back. Same deep breaths if you're going for that bind. Now, if you want to try something a little bit crazy, if you're in that bind, turn your gaze down to the outside of those right toes. Start to take the weight forward. Try and take the weight out of those left toes. Keep that bind. See if you can start to straighten the right leg. Coming into a bound, twisting half moon. Deep breaths. Finding your way all the way back to that lunge. Gently unwind. Place the hands down. Play, make a little pillow with the left side of your mat. Place that knee down. Untuck the toes. Walk the right toes a little farther forward. Take an inhale in. Shine the heart up. Pull back on that right heel. Keep that hamstring active. Exhale. Release all the way down. Inhale, coming forward. And then exhale, heading back. Inhale, forward. And exhale, back. Inhale, forward one more time. This time, reach back with that right hand. Bend into that left knee. Maybe reaching back with both. Sinking the hips forward. Pulling that left heel in. If you're feeling particularly crazy this morning, reach that left hand to the inside of the left foot. Start to create a little arch in the spine. See if you can start to slowly send that arch all the way back. Same deep breaths. Long inhales, long exhales. Slowly come back out. Release that foot back. Send your hips all the way back. You can either come back and you can let yourself out over that right foot. Or if you would like, come into Hanumanasana. You're probably a little pretty warm. Well, come as far as you can toward that split. Same deep breaths. Either reaching out over those toes, or sitting up nice and tall. And again, if you're feeling particularly crazy, 
Start to reach back for the inside of that left foot. Bend that left knee. Maybe just staying here, warming it up. Or find your way all the way back. Same deep breaths. Wherever you are, slowly start to find your way up, back to that lunge on the right side. Place those hands down, tuck the left toes. Send the right foot back to meet the left. Take an inhale in. Exhale down, chaturanga. Inhale through and up, or back bend of choice. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths. Notice what thoughts came up while we were working through that series. All of these poses that we do, that we come into at first, and then I give you the variations, these are each of the poses that we can work on so that we can move to more of these pinnacle poses. So don't allow the fear of, oh, am I doing it right? Oh, I'm not doing that pinnacle pose to stop the breath to stop that work in each of these poses that lead up and let yourself be wherever you are. Inhale that left heel up. Sink the heart a little closer to the right toes to get that left heel a little higher. Same deep breaths. Press down through the tips of the fingers. And then bring that left foot all the way through. Place it down near that left hand. Pull that right hip forward, left heel back. Come up to your fingertips. Same deep breaths. I don't know about you, my body's starting to get a little tired. I'm going to work on a deeper breath, not give in to that fear of wondering if I'm going to make it through. Reach those fingertips out, either floating or down on the earth. Start to take the weight slowly forward and up. Inhale in. Exhale, bend into that left knee, send that foot all the way back. Inhale, up crescent. Exhale, chest to thigh. Inhale, weight forward and up. Float. Exhale, bend that knee, reach that right foot back. Inhale, up, pull that right hip forward, engage the core. Exhale, chest to thigh. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, float it back. Inhale, up crescent. Exhale, hands to your hips. Take an inhale in, find that alignment, pull the hips forward. Feel it all in them. Relax the shoulders. Exhale. Float. Inhale, reach. Exhale, float the right knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale and float. Inhale, reach it all the way up. Exhale, chest. Right elbow, left thigh. Long inhales, long exhales. Open those arms up if you would like. Really finding that nice deep twist. Trying to place the back of that right shoulder blade on the outside of the left knee. Long inhales and long exhales. Wrap that left arm back, right arm under if you would like. Same deep breaths. Staying here, gaze out to the outside of those left toes. Decide if you'd like to try to take some of the weight out of that right foot. Maybe just staying here. Maybe trying to lift that right foot. Deep breaths. Slowly release all the way down to that lunge. Make a little pillow with the right side of the mat. Place that right knee down and tuck the toes. Inhale, shine the heart up. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, reaching forward. Keep that right left hamstring engaged. Exhale, heading back. Be sure it's still pulling. Inhale, heading forward. Exhale, heading back. Inhale forward one more time. This time, reach back with that left hand. Pull that right heel in. Same deep breaths. You can reach those left toes a little farther forward. Be sure you have a nice firm foundation. Maybe reaching those right fingers back as well. Sinking the hips forward. If you're feeling adventurous, grab onto the inside of that right foot and place the elbow down. Start to create that little arch. Keep pulling that foot in. 
if you can, start to reach the back of the head toward those right toes. And then maybe those left fingers head back as well. Same deep breaths. Just as slowly as you came in, find your way out. And release, heading back, reaching out over those left toes, or all the way in, Manasana. Deciding to keep that chest high, or reaching out. Seeing deep breaths. And again, if you feel adventurous, start to bend into the right knee, reach back for the inside of the right foot with the right hand, maybe just staying here, pulling it in. Or find that little arch, same deep breaths. Notice if you can still find that long breath. As you're ready, find your way up to that lunge on the left side. Tuck those back toes, gently send that left foot back, take an inhale in. Exhale down, chaturanga. Inhale through and up. Exhale back for child's pose, knees nice and wide, big toes together. A few deep, long, well-deserved breaths. Notice any thoughts that are still holding on. And let them go. What I've found a lot in my practice is that when I can confront the fears on my mat, when I can confront all this work, all of these crazy sensations through my body, that I'm able to so much more easily confront these situations in my life where I have fear. When I get terrified, when I'm in front of thousands of people or and I get terrified going in for an interview. When I get terrified, wondering about how I'm going to pay my bills, suddenly that fear is not so overwhelming when I can first learn to confront it here in a safe space. So I would encourage you as we continue to move to find your fears. Confront your fears. Notice those moments of wondering, oh, am I going to fall over? And I'm, am I going to hit the person next to me? Am I going to injure something? Am, am I sweating too much? Am I dehydrated? Am I... Whatever those thoughts are that come up, see if you can just breathe a little deeper. Find your way up, downward facing dog. Inhale that right foot up, this time point the toe, let it fall over to the side. Stay here, or trust, don't get into that fear, trust that the earth is there. Place that right foot all the way down, flip the dog. Reach those right fingertips up and back, same deep breath. And then pull those right fingers all the way around first. Reach that right heel all the way up. Bring it all the way forward, warrior two. So place that back heel down, open up. Really engage the core, tuck the hips, pull the feet in toward each other, relax the shoulders, be sure that knee stays in alignment. And then right elbow, right thigh, left arm reaches. And right fingers down, left fingers up. Stopping anywhere along the way. Feeling that right hip pulling in more and more. Use those left toes. Maybe reach that left hand behind your back, right fingertips under. Notice if that left shoulder collapses. If it does, pull it back out. If you found your way into that bind, maybe start to bring the left foot up to meet the right. Start to transfer the weight over toward that left foot. Keep that bind, find your drishti, find that focal point. Come up nice and tall. 
and then start to straighten that right leg. Long inhales, long exhale. And just as slowly, bend into that knee, place it back down. Transfer the weight toward that right foot, send that left foot all the way back, back into that bind. Nicely done. Inhale all the way back, peaceful warrior. Straighten that left leg. Reach with the right fingers. Really pull that right hip under. The right leg nice and straight and come down. Trikonasana. Pull the left ribs in. Notice if everything's still in alignment. Taking deep breaths. Decide to stay here. Or bring that left hand to your hip. Bend into the right knee, right fingertips out. Take the weight forward and up. Stacking that left hip high on top of the right. Keep the focal point on the earth for right now to make it a little easier. Then maybe reach those left fingers up. Try and float up off the right finger so you're expanding everything out through your center, engaging those left obliques. Same deep breaths. As you start to worry about following, falling, breathe a little deeper. Right hand toward the right shin. And then maybe bend that left knee, pointing the toes straight up into the sky, keeping the left hip stacked on top of the right so you can grab onto those left toes. Find that focal point, find your breath. And then maybe releasing that right shin, start to reach the fingers out in front of you. Full moon, deep breaths. Long inhales, long exhales. And wherever you are, bend into that right knee, send that left foot all the way back, lunge. Send that right foot back to meet the left. Take an inhale in, exhale chaturanga, inhale through and up. Exhale back, downward facing dog. I love the fearlessness, the going for it, even if we're gonna fall. Just find those breaths. Inhale that left heel up. Point the toe, let it fall over to the side. Trust that the earth is there. Reach up and over, press down with that whole right palm. Reach high with those left fingers. And then bring those left fingers back. Inhale that left heel all the way up. Bring it all the way through. Warrior two on the other side. Pull the feet in toward each other. Relax the shoulders. Fingertips out and away. Same deep breaths. Maybe on this side, taking a little time, closing the eyes. Feeling that strong foundation. Finding the strength in your breath. And left elbow, left thigh. Right arm, nice and long. Maybe staying here. Or take those left fingers down, right fingers up. See if you can keep that right shoulder right where it is as you reach the right fingers back and left fingers under. Deep breaths. And again, staying here or bring the right foot up to meet the left. Slowly start to stand up tall, find that focal point. Once you're tall, start to straighten that left leg. Deep breaths. Just as slowly, bend into that left knee. Place those toes down. Right toes all the way back. And find your way back, peaceful warrior. Straighten the left leg. Reach with the left fingers. And down, trikonasana. Finding that alignment. Finding that deep breath, decide to stay here, right hand to your hip. Left fingers out in front of the left toes, take the weight forward and up. Really stacking that right hip on top of the left. Breathing through any of that worry of shaking and wobbling. Maybe reach those right fingers up. Maybe float up off the left fingers. Starting to reach the left fingers toward the left shin. Bending that right knee, pointing the toes straight up into the sky, keeping that hip stacked on top of the left. 
See if you can grab onto those toes and kick into that hand. If you can, then start to reach those left fingertips out in front of you. Breathe deep. And then as you're ready, send it all the way back into that lunge. Left foot back to meet the right. Take an inhale in. Exhale down, chaturanga. Inhale through and up. Exhale back, child's pose. Let it go. A few deep breaths. Very nicely done. As you're ready, find your way up to seated on your heels. Make a little pillow with your mat. Place your knees down, hip distance apart. Be sure the heels and toes are all lined up, all the way up to the hips. Bring the hands to your low back. Start to send the hips forward. Keep your core engaged throughout all of these back bends. Don't ever let your core come unengaged so you're not just collapsing into the low back. Maybe letting the head fall back. A few deep breaths. Maybe reaching one hand at a time down towards your heels. Keep that core engaged. Keep sending your hips forward. Just as slowly as you came into it, find your way back out. Take a moment. Realign the spine, relax the shoulders. And then again, send those hips forward. Keep that core engaged. Notice if it's still nice and tight. And then this time, if you want to go a little further, take just the left fingertips back toward that left heel. Reach the right fingertips up and back. Keep that core engaged. So you're reaching up and over your shoulder instead of under. And then bring that right hand back forward. Reach under for that left, that right heel. Reach the left fingers up and back. Core engaged. Deep breaths. And just as slowly find your way back out. Realign the spine. Realign the breath and the blood. And then as you're ready, engage the core, send the hips forward. Staying here, you can reach both hands back for your heels, or you can start to reach both fingers forward, and up, and back. You can even reach all the way back for your mat. Trying to walk your fingertips back and toward your toes. Same deep breath. Very nice. Just as slowly as you came into it, find your way back out. And then this time, send your hips all the way down towards your heels. Reach those fingertips out. Release down. Release that low back. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, let it out. Deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, let it out. And slowly start to come up. Unroll the mat. Come in through tabletop, tuck the toes, downward dog. Bring that right foot forward, place the back knee down and tuck the toes. Walk the right foot over toward the left side of the mat. You can come right out into your pigeon if you would like. Or if you'd like to do mermaid or full pigeon, you can bring that right heel a little closer toward your left hip flexor. Sit up nice and tall. Start to bend into the left knee. 
grab onto those toes. And then see if you can get those toes into the eye of that left elbow. Reach the right fingers forward. Up and back. A few deep breaths. If you'd like to come into full pigeon, I find it easiest to move from here. You grab the big toe with the right hand. Take that left arm through. Grab onto the inside of the right foot with that left hand. And then reach the right fingers forward and back. Finding those deep breaths. And then as you're ready, it's all neat and pigeon prep. Open up that right hip. Flex those right toes. Chest out over your shin. And release. Nice and long through the spine, nice and long with your breath. See if you can feel your belly button getting closer and closer to the earth. And breathing through those sensations in the right hip. Notice the thoughts, notice the breath, notice the heart rate. See if you can start to slow it down. Slowly coming up to your hands. Tuck those back toes. Gently send that right foot back. And up if you would like to release that hip. Bring the left toes forward. Find your way to the other side. Heading down right into that pigeon prep if you would like. Or bring that heel a little closer. Bend that back knee. Eye of that elbow, left fingers forward and back. Try and open the chest. Maybe grabbing on with that left hand. Reach that right arm through. Everyone find your way down when you're ready. We carry so much around in our hips. When my hips first started really releasing, especially after I tore my hamstring, I would just find myself wanting to cry sometimes in these hip stretches. And of course, I'd get really scared that other people would see me crying, and then I'd be like, no, I'm not sad at all. We carry so many stresses, so many emotions in our hips, in our body, in our experiences. Our body is like a giant hard drive for all of our memories. And the more that we hold on to these memories and these stressful times and this drama in our life, and the more that we'll find this tightness and injury in the body and this fear of letting go. We so often define ourselves by the drama in our life. And there's often this 
fear, at least I know there's a fear for me, that if I let go of the drama of my life, then I won't know who I am anymore. If I let go of the tightness in this hip, then I'll, I'll be a different person. I won't be me anymore, so then who will I be? And there's this fear that this new person will somehow be worse than who I am now. I know I have so much desire for change and yet so much fear of it. And so I just keep coming back to an even deeper breath. And more and more of that trust. It's really what it comes down to for me is that I am so afraid to trust someone or something else or a new moment. I'm so afraid to give that trust to anything but myself. This concept of self, of this me, this I. Giving control of my hip over to my breath scares me because that's a lot of trust. Fear kills everything, especially the opportunity to change and grow. Fear will stop it right where it is. Slowly find your way up, tuck those back toes, send that left foot back to meet the right, maybe releasing that hip up. If you have a sheer sasana practice, a headstand practice, I would encourage you to come in to dolphin right now, place the crown of the head down, and start to find your way up. If you don't have as your sasana practice, then come forward to plank, and then come down to your mat. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees fall out to the side, right hand to your heart, left hand to your diaphragm. Take a few moments in Supta Konasana. If you're in sheer sasana, headstand, be sure to have an exit strategy just in case. And for those of you in Supta Baddha Konasana, start to feel your heart rate decrease with the right hand. Breathe into your left hand. And then if you would like to find your way into an inversion, bring your knees together, place your hands down by your hips, bring your knees up into your chest and toes up over your head, come into plow. Hands high up on your back and find your way up to shoulder stand, elbows in toward each other. Be sure all the weight is in your elbows and shoulders, bringing your shoulder blades together so there's not a single vertebra down on the mat. Taking a little time, letting the blood readjust, letting the circulation readjust. When we come into these inversions, it's a lot easier for our heart to pump blood into our brain. So sometimes you'll get a little bit of a rush as gravity is suddenly working with you. So just breathe a little deeper. Don't let me rush you. Whenever you feel ready to come down from these inversions, if you've come into headstand, take a little time in child's pose, letting that blood realign slowly back to normal. If you're in shoulder stand, and find your way slowly black back through plow. Rolling down one vertebra at a time. Maybe spending a little time in happy baby, hands to the outs inside of your knees, outsides of your feet. Just allowing your practice to round out. Listening to your body, listening to your breath.
If you're already on your back, take your feet out to the edges of your mat. Let your knees fall in toward each other. Release the low back. If you're in child's pose, when you're ready, you can join us on your back. And we'll pull the right knee up into our chest, straighten that left leg out. Pull the right knee over the body with the left hand into a nice spinal twist. And decide to stay here. Or maybe straightening that right leg, reaching for a peace grip with those left fingers. And or you can bend that left knee, reaching for the top of the left foot with the right hand, really pulling that foot in, trying to point your knee straight down away from you. Just different ways to find a nice little twist. Let the breath go, let the body release. Notice any last thoughts that are still holding on. Let them go. Let them release. There's no reason to hold on to them. As you're ready, coming back through center, head over to the other side. This time in Shavasana, in this corpse pose, is so important for the body, so important for the integration of all of the work that we've done. One of the most powerful things about yoga is to help ourselves to get out of our habitual patterns. We activate the nervous system in all of these very contradictory and different ways, pulling and pushing and squeezing and stretching and strengthening and opening all at the same time so that our nervous system can experience these things. And what Shavasana allows is a time to integrate all of that into our nervous system. Slowly bring the knees back through center and then extend out into this time of recognition, this time in corpse pose of Noticing the spots in the nervous system that do feel different, that feel active, that feel alive, that feel warm and tingling. This is a little mini reset button to take stock, to notice. Notice what habits are letting go and what new sorts of sensations and experiences we're allowing into our body, into our minds. It's all connected, all one giant nervous system. So feeling each of these spots in the body that feel active, start to send your breath into those areas, feeling them fill with oxygen, fill with space so that they can find a home to be welcomed in. And then any of the tension that's still holding on, release that on the exhales down into the earth underneath you. Feel any of that tension getting heavier and heavier until it just pulls away from you. And then all of the space in your body that you're breathing into with each inhale, feel that space getting lighter and lighter and drifting up above you, and farther and farther away, feeling weightless, feeling yourself drift as you breathe. There's nothing you need to hold on to. You're in a safe space. So allow yourself to drift. Floating, breathing. And if you ever begin to fear, there's always the tether of your breath. You can always come back to that deep breath.
So allow yourself to drift, allow yourself the space, allow yourself to heal, allow yourself to breathe, allow yourself to just be. Slowly find your way back, invite your breath back in, start to activate with the fingers and toes if you would like, roll the wrists and ankles or stay right here melting down into your mat. If you would like to move, then you can stretch your arms up above you. Keeping the eyes softly shut, roll onto one side or the other. Either staying down on your mat, find your way back to that comfortable seated position. Keeping the eyes softly shut. Notice if your nervous system is a little calmer. 
If your breath is a little easier, if your thoughts are a little further apart, It is absolutely terrifying to be fearless. But courage is being terrified and doing it anyway. Inhale the arms out and up. Bring the palms together. Exhale them down in between the eyes. May your life be filled with enlightened thoughts. Inhale, exhale the hands in front of the mouth. May you always have the patience for enlightened speech. Inhale, exhale the hands in front of the heart. May your heart have the healing it requires to live an enlightened life. Namaste. Take your time. There is no rush. I just want to thank you all so much for giving me the trust of guidance. It is always such an honor. As most of you know, these are all donation-based classes. If you make it with us here in person, there's a donation station on your way out. And for those of you at home, there's a donation button on your screen. We ask that you honor the suggested $15 donation if you're able, or leave whatever you can. It is so much appreciated so that we can continue to bring this service to our community and the honor of bringing this service to the world. I hope that you will take some of this fearlessness in with you into your day, your week, your month, your life. And it is truly a brilliant one. <laughs>